Hi, this is a presentation of the concepts of OSPF and it's a part of my advanced networking course. OSPF is uh, a routing protocol and it's an interior routing protocol, which means that it is not a routing protocol that you will find, for instance, on the internet. It's something that you use within limited smaller types of networks. For instance, corporate networks can use OSPF as their routing protocol. OSPF is an, is an open standard. It's a, a quite an old protocol. It, was, uh, it came uh, in 1988 and then uh, there was two versions, OSPF version 2 and OSPF version 3. Version 3 is made for IP version 6. And it was updated again in 2008, but still very, very old concepts and old an old protocol. But of course, it works still. When we look at OSPF, it is um, and the features of it, uh, we will see that OSPF is a, an efficient protocol. It uh, has fast convergence, which means that when you send an update. It will uh, the update will spread fast in the network. It's scalable. It's easy to scale up and scale down. It's quite secure, and it is classless, classless, which means that it will operate when we are using some kind of subnetting or supernetting. When we look at the components of OSPF, it has some databases uh, to help the. The operation of the protocol. First of all, it has something called the adjacency database, which is something that OSPF use to get an overview of all their neighbors, the router neighbors. We can look into this database by look, using the command show IP OSPF neighbor. Then it has something called the link state database, which is also something called the topology table which will see the connections between the different routers in our entire network. And you can see this by looking into the table with the show IP OSPF database uh, command. Then we have the routing table or the forwarding uh, database, which shows us the best route for each network that we have. And uh, we can do, uh, see this in, our sh in the show IP route command. So this is the three tables and the three databases that OSPF uses for their own functionality. So the first thing that happens is that OSPF routers will perform a, um, a neighbor adjacency with their neighbors. So they will look and find out who are my neighbors and what are the state of my neighbors. Um, and it uses something called a LSA, link state advertisement, to contain and find the state of each link that we have between our neighbors. So the routers will flood their LSA to the older adjacencies and we will receive them and then we will send them onwards again to my neighbors. So I will receive a lot of updates if I were a router and then I will send them out to my neighbors and they will send them out again and then again and again and again all through the network. We'll send these LSAs. Um, then when we have that we have uh, the, uh, the adjacency database and then we will uh, create the topology database and then we will find out how far away is all our different networks in the entire overall intranet. Um, we will create a, a search 3, an SPF algorithm which is the shortest path first algorithm made by Dijkstra. So it will create and find, because now we have the cost of all the different routes and then it will create like a topology and a search three of all the different networks that we have available. Um, and then it will find out what is the best path to each network and it will update our routing table. We can for instance see here, if we look at router 1, we will see that, for instance, we can reach the network 10.500.16. This is the network up here. And we will go through router 1 to router 2 to get there. And the cost 
is 22, which means the cost between router 1 and router 2 is 20, and the cost from router 2 out to the network is 2. So all it will accumulate the cost. So it's altogether 22. And then we will have a, a entire map of all the networks that we can reach. And that is our routing table. We can have two different types of, uh, of OSPF. What we're going to look at first is the single area OSPF when we only have one area and everything is routed within the area. We can also have multi-area OSPF. If we have like very huge networks, we would like to segment our network. Uh, and then we can have different types of areas. And we have, for instance, the area zero, which is the backbone area that will connect all the other areas in our network as well. But we will look at more into that uh, in next, next week when we will cover multi-area OSPF. The OSPF uh, will also maintain these information all the time. It will all the time find out, do I still have connections to my neighbors or is something changing? And it uses something called LSP, Link State Packages, to establish and maintain the adjacency and to exchange our routing updates. Um, so it all the time it will send out hello packages to, to feel if the neighbors are still there. If something checks uh, changes, it will send an update and or if something has if I want to have an update, we can send requests for an update. Uh, we can also send a description for the ca uh, so for the synchronization to find out which are the valid information, which are older information and newer information. And we can also send an acknowledgement back that we have received everything OK. The most important thing is, of course, the hello packages that it will use to, to send their neighbors and to establish the adjacencies. Um, also, we use the hello packages to elect something called the designated router and the backup designated router, the DR and the BDR, which is something that we use on multi-access networks, for instance, like Ethernet and Frame Relay, especially on Ethernet, where we have, if we have many OSPF routers connected to the same Ethernet, then um, we would need to have a DR and a BDR. I'll show you just a moment. Um, the hello packages and the intervals. Um, the hello packages is sent out to a multicast address designed for OSPF, which is 224.005, and also a similar one in for IP version 6. It will be sent out every 10 seconds on multi-access and point-to-point -point networks, and every 30 seconds on non-broadcast multi-access networks. Uh, the dead interval is set to four times the hello interval. So if I haven't heard anything from my neighbors in, a, in 40 seconds on an Ethernet, well, then I will say, OK, my neighbor is dead. And then I will send an update for that. The reason why we need the DRs and the BDRs in OSPF is because we have all these different adjacencies. And if we are all connected to the same uh, Ethernet here, we are all connected to the same switch here, well then I had to perform all these adjacencies and I have to send updates to all these adjacencies. So what we do to avoid that, because it will be too many updates all the time, well then I elect one of the routers to be the DR and the other one, or one other, to be the backup designated router. And these will then take care of uh, sending and receiving all the different updates and performing the adjacencies. So that is why we need a DR and a BDR. But it's only on multi-access networks, for instance, like Ethernet, or on point-to-point -point, uh, networks. Well, we, on point-to-point, -point, we don't need that. But on, on multi-access uh, networks, we need it. And we will see later on how we elect them. Yeah, that was it. Thank you.